Murder, I had to escape, as a girl. Part 2. I had a great night with Stormy, then all hell broke loose. I found myself covered in blood and Stormy dead, I had to escape, dressed as a girl. After a fantastic night with Stormy, I was woken up by shouting and screaming in the next room. Not knowing what was happening, I sprung out of bed and rushed naked to see what the noise was all about. I saw Stormy lying on the floor in a pool of blood, and then I was hit on the head from behind. I crashed to the floor unconscious. When I came around, in a daze and with a sore head, I was covered in blood with a knife in my hand. It looked as if I had killed Stormy, but I knew I didn't, I was being framed. I had to get away as quickly as possible. I had cross-dressed since I was young, and I always felt so relaxed and comfortable dressed as a girl. I quickly showered to get the blood off me, cleaned the knife off my fingerprints, dressed, and left Stormis flat. I knew if I could get back to my flat, I could change myself into a girl and make my escape. Hopefully, the police would not be looking for a girl only a guy. I got dressed in my girl clothes, did my makeup and hair and packed all my girly things into a suitcase. I had never been outside my flat in public dressed as a girl, but I did look good. I hoped nobody would think I was a guy and turn me in. As I opened my flat door, the staircase was empty. I went as quick as I could in my heels down the stairs, it was only two flights. My heels made so much noise on the tiled floor, I was sure somebody would come to see who it was. Luckily, nobody appeared from the other flats, and I got to the main door of the exit. As I stepped out the street was empty, and I made a dash pulling my suitcase behind me. The noise of my heels and the case rattled through the street, but nobody looked to see who it was. I had parked the car around the corner in the next street, and I was so relieved when I reached it. I fumbled in my handbag for my keys, and soon I was sat in the driver's seat. I gave a sigh of relief. I hoped nobody had seen a girl leaving the flat. I knew I had to get as far as I could before the police identified me as the guy leaving the club with Stormy. I headed off north towards Scotland. It would be a long drive, over six hours on the motorway. I hoped, the car wouldn't get picked up on the motorway cameras before I left in Scotland. I must have been driving for over three hours, and I was desperate for a toilet stop and something to eat and drink. I pulled into a services with toilets, a petrol station and cafe. I park out of sight and walked into the services. My first stop was the toilets, I couldn't use the gents, I was dressed as a girl. I had never used the ladies' toilets before, but I had no alternative. I walked in and there was a queue for the cubicles, something you rarely got in the gents. I stood in the queue, and I was desperate for the toilet. My legs were pinned so close together to stop me wetting myself. At last, the queue moved, and I got a cubicle. I quickly pulled my dress up and my panties down, and just made the toilet as it all came out. I seemed to pee forever, but eventually it stopped, and I was so relieved. I left the cubicle, washed my hands and touched up my makeup and my hair. I was still looking pretty good and was confident everyone would think I was a girl. I headed to the cafe. I ordered the all-day breakfast and a coffee, and found a seat facing a television on the wall. I ate my breakfast and had my coffee, and then a news bulletin came on the TV. It was about Stormy. All it said was that a woman had been found badly injured in her flat in London, and that the police were looking for two men. They showed a video of Stormy and me leaving the club, and also, as we entered her block of flats and me leaving it. The other video was of another man entering and leaving the block, in the early hours of the morning. I thought, that could have been her killer. Hopefully, it would take some time before they identified me and went to my flat. I quickly finished my meal and coffee and headed back to the car. As I got near to the car, I saw a policeman looking through the widows. I thought, oh no, this is it, they have me. There wasn't anything I could do except walk casually over and speak to him. Hello officer, I said in my sweetest girly voice, is there a problem? Is this your car madam, he asked. 
Yes, officer, I replied. Do you realize, madam, you have a side light broken? No, I say, surprised. You'll need to get this fixed as soon as possible, madam, he tells me. Oh, sorry, officer, I say. Hoping he will let me go with a caution, as I smile at him. Well, he says, I'll just give you a warning this time but if I stop you again, I will have to book you. Oh, thank you officer, I reply, as I give him another smile and run my hand through my hair. I get back in the car and head on my way. That was a close thing, I thought, obviously my car details have not been distributed yet. I continue heading north and soon I reach the Scottish border. My stat nav says only 70 miles left to go. I get off the motorway and use the back roads from here on, trying to avoid any cameras picking me up or police patrols. After about 60 miles, I'm in the back of beyond, just moors and forests. The road is a single track road with grass up the middle, it is full of twists and turns and not a house in sight. I see a sign saying the retreat up a dirt track. I head up the track, it is so bumpy and full of puddles, but eventually I see a little cottage at the end of the track. This must be Pam's, I think. I stop the car some way from the cottage, and wonder what she will think, me turning up like this, out of the blue. I'm not the Andy she knew, I'm dressed as a girl Angela, on the run from the police. Oh, SH1T I think. How do I get her to understand, and will she turn me in? I don't really have a second option, I'm here now, I don't have anywhere else to go. I start the car and head up to the cottage. As I pull up, I see Pam feeding some chickens. She starts to head towards the car. I step out in my heels on the muddy dirt road, and my heels start to sink. I'm not dressed for this out of the way place, I think. I'm trying to pull myself out of the ground as Pam shouts, can I help you miss? Hi Pam. I shout back. Who are you she says, staring at me. I have trouble saying anything then I blurt out, I'm Andy. Andy who she says. Andy White, I reply. Your old boyfriend. You want me to believe that, she says, you're obviously a girl. No, I say, it is me, it's a long story. She looks at me again, staring into my eyes. Goodness gracious, it is you Andy, she says, have you had a sex change? No, I say, can we go inside, and I'll explain everything. Well, this is odd, Pam says, come in, I can't wait to hear why you're dressed as a girl, and such a pretty one as well. She takes me into her little cottage, it's just one big room, a kitchen, dining table, and a sofa, all in the same room. There's another room off, which I suppose is the bedroom. Sit down, she says, and I'll make us a drink. I sit down at the table all ladylike with my legs together. Well, you even act like a girl Andy, she says. She makes some tea and brings it to the table. You, pretty little thing, she says, tell me all about it. I start telling her all about meeting Stormy and what happened in the flat. That I had to get away because the police would be looking for me, so that's why I'm dressed as a girl. But where did you get the clothes and learn to do the makeup and your hair you sweet thing, she asks. I had to admit that I like to cross-dress as a girl as it makes me feel good. I always wondered Pam said, as when we were together, my clothes used to get moved around and untidy. You used to dress up in my clothes didn't you Andy? I had to admit, I did. Pam looks at me, I like you as a girl Andy, what do you call yourself now? Angela, I reply. You know if you stay here, I can be arrested for aiding and abetting a criminal. But I didn't kill her, I say. Please let me stay Pam, if only for a few days. Pam thinks for a minute and then says, all right you can stay, but while you're here you will be Angela, and be dressed, as a girl all the time. Do you understand Angela? Yes, I reply, thanks Pam. Also, you must help me with all the work here. Firstly though, you must hide your car in the woods and cover it with a tarpaulin. It's on top of the logs outside the door. Thanks Pam, I say, as I go to kiss her. She pushes me away, Angela, 
what are you doing, you're a girl now, and I've only just met you. Sorry, I say, and I go to move the car and hide it. After taking it far into the woods and covering it, I return to the cottage. Pam is busy preparing dinner. Come and help me Angela to prepare these vegetables, she says. She hands me a pretty, pink pinafore with flowers on it. Put this on Angela, you don't want to get your pretty dress dirty. I start getting to like being a girl, and Pam telling me what to do. Maybe, I should have told her about my cross-dressing years ago, perhaps things would have been different for us. She seems to like me as a girl, rather than a guy. Pam tells me about her life at the cottage. Angela, I have no mains electricity here only what I get from the solar panels, water comes from a well in the garden, I have no phone, no television, and no internet connection. Life is quite basic here, and even my post gets sent to the local post office, 15 miles away. As you can understand we are as isolated in this modern world as we can get. I grow much of my food and only go to town to get essentials and any equipment and materials I may need. So, I don't think you need to worry, it's very rare anybody turns up here, unless I invite them. Now your her will have to go to town tomorrow to pick up a few things, are you all right with that? Yes, I say. Not knowing what will happen in the town. If you like my story, then please press like and subscribe below to my channel. 250 likes for part 3. Story written and produced by Phil Gurley.